The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. For you mystery murder buffs, as nearly as I can determine, the first foul play was committed by Cain, son of Adam and Eve, who rose up and slew his brother, Abel. We don't know exactly when that crime was committed. It was so very much in the past. Nor can we fix a date for the killing you're about to hear, for it takes place so very much in the future. Captain, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Jack. Everything okay in the message center? Captain, can you grab a hold of Doc Mayer and get your flame bucket over here? I can't leave the bridge right now. I'm checking the state vector. I'll get to you as soon as I can. That's not soon enough, Captain. I'm all alone here with a very dead body. Our mystery drama... Murder on the Space Shuttle, based on a story by Jacques Futrell, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Paul Hecht and Gordon Heath. I shall return shortly with Act One. It's unfortunately true, as tomorrow's history will verify... Hundreds of years from now, although man may have conquered disease, hunger, and space, he still will not have learned how to conquer himself. When I say man, of course, I include woman. Project yourself into time, far into the future. The Robert Goddard, a U.S. space shuttle, is about to take hundreds of passengers thousands of miles beyond the stars. Murder will ride the rocket ship with us. Fasten your restraining belts and stand by as we blast off. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 10, 9, start ignition sequence. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engines running. Lift off. We have a liftoff at 12.12 on the Robert Goddard. Hello, Control. Captain of the Goddard speaking. Is that you, Charlie C-17? It is. You are go for staging. Thrust is go, all engines. You are looking good. Be advised, visual is go today. Couple of thunderstorms downrange. This is Earth Control at 13 plus 13. Shut down. Right on time. See you when you get back to Earth, Captain. Roger. Jack, you can leave the bridge now. I'd like you to go to the middle deck and check into the comm screen center. See how Graham 7 is doing and report back to me. Sure, Captain. A problem? No. Graham Seven's had a long shift. I'd better get myself below and make my little speech to the passengers about their next two weeks on the shuttle. Yeah, they do get restless this first day. You know Graham G-7? Uh, no, we've never worked the same shuttle. He's been stuck up in comm screen since last night, fixing all the relays. I want to make sure he's okay. Say no more, Charlie. I'm on my way. Oh, and um, tell your passengers, anyone who wants to send a message, either ahead to Skyland 6 or back to Earth to come and see me, explain to them they go to the comm screen door, touch their wrist signals, identify, and I'll just let them in. Move it. Get yourself over to comm screen. Yes, sir. Graham Seven? Uh, well, where are you? Uh, why didn't you put some lights on? Oh, uh, what are you doing over there at the console? It's me, First Officer Jack J.B. Four. What's the matter? Graham? Oh, no. Why 
Why doesn't the captain pick up his emergency relay? Captain Charlie C-17, will you answer me? Oh. Oh, my... My head is... Oh. Something in the air. I... I feel dizzy. What... What's happening to me? Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Is there someone in the communication screen center? I'm standing outside the door. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what is it? State, state your name and business, please. My name is Jennifer, J-13. Uh, yes, yes. I, I can see you on the monitor. What do you want? I wish to send a message back to Earth. Well, I'm sorry, you can't right now. Uh, transmissions are closed down. The... S-band relay is so bad we can't get through it all. I can't promise anything. Why can't I speak to the regular communications officer, Gray MG7? He knows me. Look, this is the last time I talk to you. Go away. That's you, Jack. Look, I'm in comm screen. Where have you been? I told you. The usual pep talk to the passengers. What's up? Where's Doc Mayer? Well, he's around somewhere. Probably handing out pressure and air sick pills. Well, look, can you find him and get your flame bucket over here? What's the problem? I don't want to use the squawk box for this message. Something wrong with the equipment? I guess you could call it that. But can't you and Graham G7 work it out? I don't know when I can leave the bridge, Jack. I'm checking the state vector. Captain, get over here on the double with Doc Mayer. Why? Somebody hurt? He doesn't look hurt to me, Captain. He looks dead. <laughs> Doctor, what killed Graham G-7? Some kind of a shock. We'll have to get him to the shuttle's hospital before I'll know. Even then... Even then what? Jack, I don't have all the testing facilities on board for a complete autopsy report. My double X-ray scanners can't do everything. Unless there's an obvious cause, we may not know definitely how this man died... Until we dock at Skyland 6. Shock, cardiac arrest, it isn't easy to diagnose. Before we move Graham 7, I'll have one of the men from security come up and take measurements and pictures. Captain, you're acting as if you thought this was murder. You tell me. What happened? Look, Captain, when I left you, I didn't come directly here. I, I went to my quarters, changed to my suction shoes, and took a quick jog around the deck. Matter of fact, I ran right by that porthole. Did you see Graham Seven? Yeah, I saw him, but he didn't see me. He was sitting at the console where he is now. Slumped over like that? Well, I can't say, Doctor. It wasn't too light in here. He was sort of bending forward. Did you speak to him, Jack? Was the porthole open as it is now? Well, I told you I was jogging, and I stopped for a second. I said, hi, Graham, see you in a few minutes. I'll be taking over, or something like that. And, well, I kept on running, went back to my cabin, changed, came here, let myself in the door, and, well, I found him just like this. See anyone around? No, nope, nobody. Well, while I was trying to raise you, Captain, one of the passengers wanted to send a message, but I put her off. Her? Yeah, I, uh, I uh, wrote the name down here. Uh, oh, yeah, here we are. Jennifer J-13. Yeah, one thing at a time. First, I'll call security, have them go over the place, and then, Doctor, it's in your hands. This is the captain speaking. I want two security officers with tape scan and tape imprint devices immediately in the comm screen center. This is high secret. Jack. Sir. You are to go to your quarters. You're not to consider yourself under arrest, but available for interrogation. For how long, Captain? If it takes all 15 days of our voyage, so that's how long it takes. It'll be hard on me because I need a first officer, but there's no other way. I've got to go by the rules. I'd have to ask my own mother to stay in her cabin. What can I do? It's stupid. It sure is. I know less about this than, than you do. I believe you, Jack, but you were here. You commissioned Graham G-7 as communications officer. You know all about him. His friends, his enemies. You cleared him. Today was the first time I ever met him, and... and 
Well, he was dead then. I guess that's what we have to find out, Jack. I'm going up to the bridge. Captain Charlie C-17, sir. Yes. Your security? Yes, we have the results of our tape scan at the Comscreen Center. It's written up? Uh, not yet, sir. I thought the uh, captain would want an immediate report, so I uh, come to make it orally. Right. Did you seal the communication center? Yes, sir. But what about messages back and forth from the shuttle to control, sir? I've already had all the lines patched into the bridge and a bank of portable scanners. We'll continue transmissions from here. Hello, U.S. Space Shuttle Robert Goddard. This is Control. Do you read us? Affirmative, Control. Captain Charlie C-17 speaking. The security, be with you as soon as I can. Don't go. We have the weather for your docking at 1800 on the 10th. Got you. I'm logging you. The wind at about 090 at 18 knots. Skyline 6 will have tilted to 1600. Your delta K will be plus 10 feet. That ought to do it. Are you handling the Graham G7 ladder? Still working on it. I've got security here on the bridge now with a preliminary tape scan and tape imprint. I'll be cluing you in as soon as I can. Sorry about all this. I think it's the first time it's happened on a shuttle to one of our own men. I hope it's the last. I'll call you at 0019. Roger. Over and out. Keep pitching, Charlie. Gotcha. All right, security. What did you find? Well, Captain, air imprint tells us there was one person in the area making a different EUG imprint than those we can account for. Is that all you come up with? What about height, age, build, etc.? You ought to be able to tell that. Well, we hope to, Captain, but our imprint analyzer needs an overhaul. So, well, it's a little slow on details. We'll have them, though. This person who occupied space in Comscreen, who's not the first officer, myself, or the deceased. Are you sure it's a human being? Not one of our work machines? Well, at this point, we're not sure. And they're all over the shuttle, but... As I said, this is just preliminary. All right, security. Let me know when you have more information. Captain, why are we walking around the deck? This is where Jack said he went jogging, Doctor. So? Just thought we'd take a swing around, see what we could see. Now, on the right, Doc, when we pass the counter's cyclical indicator, there'll be the porthole of the comscreen center you saw yesterday from the inside. Charlie, you think someone stood outside this porthole and zapped Graham G7? It's possible, isn't it? The console he was sitting at is right in the line of sight. Careful. There's something on the deck. Move your foot. Here, I'll pick it up. Don't touch it. Huh? It's only a small tube of metal. Light, isn't it? Here. Doctor, don't you know that even breathing on evidence contaminates it, let alone handling it? You mean... What does it look like to you? A thin tube about... Fifteen centimeters long. A probe. Looks like a probe. Small enough to hide in a pocket or a handbag. You've never seen one of these before? No, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not surprised. They've been illegal since the fourth millennium. This innocuous-looking probe, easy to hide and looking like an ordinary key probe we use to lock up our houses, is far from that. This harmless-appearing tube is a deadly, lethal synthesis of an ancient blow dart savages used for centuries and a laser-propelled weapon. Once the ray is released, what it reaches dies. You think this instrument could have been used to kill Graham Seven? Let's get it over to your hospital lab and do some analysis. Captain... I told you we don't have the equipment on board for intensive investigation, uh, particularly for metal strobe analysis. Then we'll photophone what we have back to Earth and ask them to do the investigating. 
Whatever the odds, we've got to play them. We've one murdered man on board. Of that, I'm certain. I don't want any more. Spacecrafts of the future are indeed, or rather will indeed, be islands unto themselves, like separate minuscule planets cruising towards islands in the sky. Small, compact, life-bearing. Therefore, any crime committed on a space-bound rocket can be doubly dangerous, for what is fatal to one could be fatal to all. I shall return shortly with Act Two. many centuries into the future. Travel to the planets, to islands in space, whole civilizations growing up in the sky, meteors being mined for their minerals are as commonplace as is our Earth-bound life today. We are aboard the U.S. space shuttle Robert Goddard, named after the Massachusetts scientist born a hundred years ago, known as the father of modern rocketry. A ship's officer has been found dead. A heart attack? Possibly. Cardiac arrest? It would seem so. But arrested by what? Is it the device now being examined in the ship's hospital laboratory? That small empty probe we picked up from the deck? I've still got it under the scanner, but nothing's showing. The tube's made of axionite. Axionite is completely subatomic. That's why the scanner won't reveal the molecular or atomic makeup. That's how it escaped detection when it was taken aboard. That's sure a new one. No, it isn't. The idea behind this is ancient history. Disguise your weapon. Bring something on board everyone has, like an ordinary key probe. Centuries ago, Soviet powers perfected a device which shot poison-filled particles from an umbrella or a cane at anyone they wished to be rid of. I've seen one in our Space Ordnance Museum. And I've seen a duplicate of this probe. Uh, let me shut off the scanner. I can't think with that on. Instead of that old-fashioned umbrella that propelled poison, this probes the human brain, snaps the electrical impulses. Death. One aim, one shot, that's it. Only an RM beam could do that. Someone came along to where we were standing on the deck, pointed the tube at Graham. Zap. Doc, you've got to work up blood samples from his body to transmit to control. If they can tell us what Graham died of, it might help us find out who killed him. Good morning, Control. Robert Goddard on the wing. Good morning, Charlie. We've still got our problem. Security and Doc Mayer have photophoned you all their findings. Our first officer is still confined to his cabin, and I need him. Any news your end? Did you make an analysis of Graham's blood samples? And what about an infrared composition test of the suspected weapon? Both results are in. You can release your first officer. He had nothing to do with Graham's death. I'm glad to hear it. Are you sure? Positive. As for the axionite probe you found outside the comp screen center, it's a spent missile well into its half-life. Control, you mean it hasn't been used recently? Not for six to eight months. How it got on your ship, we can't determine from here. So if the probe wasn't responsible for his death, what was? Possibly bacterial endocarditis. The bacteria show the blood. But Graham had a physical before coming aboard for the flight. Doc Mayer gave it to him. How could he have passed it? You might ask Mayer. Captain, you'll be docking in Skyland 6 in five days. When you get there, arrange to have Graham's remains shipped back to us. Affirmative. Hey, I just thought. Shouldn't we check with his family? He's got no family. What about the profile of Jennifer J-13? Still working on it. Yes, who is it? Please touch your wrist patch so I can see you on the door monitor. Oh, yes. Jennifer J-13. Hold on. I'll open the door for you. 
Captain Charlie C-17? Yes, I am. You may come in and be seated. I'm Jennifer J-13. I know you are. You gave evidence in the death of our communications officer. I believe you tried to gain entrance to the comm screen center without knowing that, at the time, Graham was lying dead. Oh, please, don't say any more. It's all such a nightmare. I came to see you, Captain, because I wanted to know if there was anything you could tell me about... Well, I mean, can you... Do you know how it happened? I can't believe he's dead. It's so cruel. My dear girl, you must try not to let this upset you so. Well, you see, Graham and I, we were going to be married. Oh, I had no idea. Do you have any suspicion about it? Who? Oh, who did it? Why? Matter of fact, I've just been talking to Earth Control, and I don't know how to say this, Jennifer. It's possible that nobody did it. You see, Graham had a congenital heart disease. That's not true. Oh, I'm afraid tests on his blood say otherwise. I don't care what the tests say. It couldn't be. Why couldn't it be? When we, when we took our examination to marry, we had a complete mind and matter scan, as everybody has to do when they're going to be married. Both of us checked out 100% compatible and 100% healthy. He couldn't have had a heart disease. Are you sure? We were going to marry in Sky City and live there. Sure. Of course I am. We wouldn't have been permitted to go through with our plans. It's a mystery to me. I was also wondering how Graham could have passed his flight physical if he'd had a bad heart. What are you going to do? I'm going to talk this over with the ship's doctor. And then what? Graham didn't die of a bad heart. Someone killed him. Wanted him dead. Jennifer, we arrive in Skyland 6 in five days. We've alerted the authorities ahead, and they'll take charge. You have to do more than that. Jennifer, I am a captain of a space shuttle. I am not equipped. Nor do I have the education or the time to conduct a complete criminal investigation. If a crime has been committed, I'll be told how to proceed, and so will the passengers. I don't want to wait five days. If there's a murderer on this shuttle, when we land, he could get away. I am going to find out who he is, even if you won't. I can't order you not to do what you wish. But there are certain sections of this shuttle that are off limits to any but the ship's personnel. If I didn't know that you were the captain here, it wouldn't be difficult to convince myself that you know something and that you are concealing something. Goodbye, Captain. Jack, I'm truly sorry. Captain, you did the only thing you could. Keep me under surveillance. I really never thought you had anything to do with Graham's death, but I had to go by the rule book, no matter how silly it seems. So Control says they think he died of endocarditis? Possibly. No, I don't believe it. Neither does Jennifer J-13. Oh, who's that? That girl who came to send a message when you just discovered the body and you wouldn't let her inside the communication center. She gave me a real hard time just now when I told her... We're confined to the shuttle until the police are finished with us. We'll be quarantined for Apollo knows how long. I want to get back to my family. Oh, the police won't give us much flack. <laughs> oh, yes, they will, especially me, because I saw Graham first. Oh, look, it's no problem for you, Captain. Your home is Earth. Mine's up there in Sky City. I got a wife and two children I haven't seen in months. I've been on that Saturn, Venus, Jupiter shuttle. I mean, the last time, the last time it was a year and, and four months before I got leave. I don't want to hang around waiting for the local investigation to make up their minds. I want to go home. I keep saying to myself, there's something I've overlooked. I'm missing some fact. What is it? Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing, Captain. All the while, you had me stuck in my cabin. I, I kept trying to remember what I saw, what I felt, trying to piece together my direct vision and, and my peripheral vision. Captain, I'd, I'd like to go back up to the comm screen center and stand exactly where I stood, turn on my memory sense computer and see what happens. I'm with you. 
Maybe there is something. It could work. It sure did in the old days. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that back in the 20th century, those, those primitive times, they had individual memory sense computers? No, but they had hypnotism. If the police wanted a description of someone from a person who'd seen them but couldn't remember, sometimes they'd subject the witness to hypnosis uh. in order to make contact with his subconscious memory. Yeah, and? and? Very often it would work. The hypnotized witness would be able to describe the man they were looking for. Yeah, that was all right in the old days, but I prefer having control. Memory chips are much more accurate than brain memory cells. Look, let's do it now. Test you in com screen? Yeah, the sooner the better. Why not? Let me check security first. All right, Captain. Uh, this is the way it happened. I came in to relieve Graham, right? Now, most of the lights were out. I, um, I closed the door like this. Mm. You didn't see much. No, no. I, uh, I stood here for a minute. I didn't see Graham right away, but I, you know, I had a feeling, a, a sense, a, you know that, that feeling you get when, when someone's been in a room before you, like the perfume or the, or the heat of a human being who's just left? Did you say perfume? Uh, well, did I? Yeah, 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 I guess I did. Ah, uh, you, you, you know what I mean, Captain. Well, keep moving around, Jack, to jog your memory sense. Yeah, well... Hold it. There, there's, some, there's something over here. Yeah, it's, it's coming to me. It's... I got it. Yeah, yeah, but I, I already told you that. Tell it to me again. Uh, the, the equipment was on. You didn't tell me that? Was Graham sending or receiving? No, no, he wasn't doing anything. He, he was out. He was, he was dead. No, the, the, just, just let me concentrate now. Memory sense. Memory sense... The screen had been receiving. Now, what, what was on it? I'm, try, I'm trying to see it. What did it read, Jack? Nothing at the time I was there, but it had been receiving. Now, now if I can patch in my inner peripheral vision and my peripheral sound... Gee, there was something on that screen, I'm sure of it, but before I came in that door... I checked his log. There's nothing on the log tape. Yeah, then I saw him... Graham bent over the console. I didn't even have to go near him, really. I knew he was dead. Now I know. What? I passed out. No, no. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I can I can feel the way I felt. Yeah, it's it's coming over me again. It's like like something at the back of my head boring into my skull. I I fell down, Captain. Yeah, I fell down right right where you're standing. When you fell down, how long were you out? I don't know. I I came to when I when I heard a wrist signal tone from someone who wanted to come in and, and send a message. That, uh, what was her name? Uh, Jennifer, J-13 girl. Hey. Hey, Captain. You feel sort of strange? Like, like, like you're floating? Like, it, there's, there's something about this place. I, I'm, I'm feeling dizzy again. Jack, you'd better go see Doc Mayer. Gee, I'm getting a headache that is fierce. I, I tell you, Captain, something's funny in the air here. This, this Pain is killing me. Certainly, life as we project it into future centuries seems to present more problems than life and death today. I suspect, though, that man's reasoning and motives will, no matter what the age, be no different from ours. We may be capable of engineering ourselves to perform limitless tasks, conquering and creating worlds in the universe, but how long will it be before the conquest of jealousy, anger, and greed? I shall return shortly with Act Three. a flight officer on a spacecraft shuttling from Earth to an orbiting colony. The flight doctor, whose blood sample of the deceased does not match his medical record. The girl who claims the dead man was to marry her. Are these facts or fictitious dissembling? 
Is truth spoken here or lies? The captain of the space shuttle is determined to find out before his ship docks in 20 hours on Skyland 6. We find him on the bridge. Yes, captain here. It's Jack. Did you see the doctor? No, I couldn't find him. I don't know where he is. You Uh, couldn't locate Doc Mayer? Well, he's not in the shuttle hospital or in his cabin. No one's seen him. How's your head, Jack? A dizzy feeling. Oh, it's gone. I feel fine now. I'm I'm sure it's something in the comm screen center. You're not making sense, Jack. Well, you know, maybe some kind of gas. It didn't bother me. Maybe radiation. I I don't know what. It didn't bother you at all? Nope. (laughs) Gotta be something I'm allergic to. Jack, I've got Jennifer J-13 coming in. I'm going to quiz her on how well she knows Graham from what I've got on his profile. She knew him? Didn't I tell you? Said they were going to get married. What does it say in Graham's profile about her? Not a word. Well, good luck, Captain. I'm opening the door, Jennifer. Come in. Sit down. When I got the message that you wanted to see me, I was glad. I've been trying to get up enough nerve to ask you a favor. You see, Graham and I... We hadn't known each other very long. We have a profile on Graham G7 about his lifestyle and his friends, but your name doesn't appear on it. You told me you two were getting married, that you had a compatibility and health test. Nothing about that in here. Well, I told you. We didn't know each other very long. We told our plans to nobody, so I never met any of Graham's friends. I don't know why our mind and matter scans aren't there. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I wish I didn't have to, but but I have this favor. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Well, then stop quizzing me. It won't bring him back. What is it you want, Jennifer? Can I take charge of Graham's body? Tomorrow, when the launch jets come out to meet us... Could I take Graham on one of them and leave this awful shuttle before you dock? I don't think I could bear to stay aboard here any longer. I'm afraid the orders are for all passengers and crew to remain on board until the Skyland 6 police have questioned everyone. Captain, you're just in time. Something's coming through from control. Space Shuttle, Robin Goddard. This is Earth Control. Do you read me? Hello, Earth Control. First Officer Jack, JB4 here. We read you. Is the captain there? Yes. Hello, Control. I'm here. Charlie, we're putting this message through to you in code. It's high secret. Repeat. High secret. That's the complete message. Over and out. Gotcha. Over and out, Control. Did you decode all that, Captain? I thought we had a mystery before, but this beats all. Here's the message. Blood sample photophoned from body of Graham C-7 does not match blood type on file at space headquarters. Doesn't match? So it's still possible Graham was murdered. We know he didn't have bacterial endocarditis. Question... Why did Doc Mayer send the wrong specimen back? I can't believe old Doc Mayer's involved in this. Question, whose blood analysis did he relay back to control if it wasn't Graham's? Suppose the doctor knew what he was doing. Why did he do it? What's he hiding? Yeah, and and, and where? Believe me, I, I looked everywhere for him. This is security's job. This is the captain. Is that security? Yes, sir. We're trying to locate Dr. Mayer. Would you do a thorough search of the shuttle and bring him to the bridge? That won't be necessary, Captain. What do you mean? I want that search immediately. I mean, sir, Dr. Mayer has been found. You found him? How is he? We were just going to call you, Captain. We put Dr. Mayer in the ship's hospital. Doc? Doc Mayer, it's Charlie. Just move a finger if you can hear me. Charlie, come closer. I want to 
tell you. What happened to you, Doc? This is my last flight, Captain. I, I don't want to make any more. Shh, Doc. Just lie there. Don't talk anymore. Save your strength. I... I, I gotta tell you, before it's too late, I'm getting too old. I, I sent the wrong sample of blood, not Graham's. I, I'm not well. I know what it is. So every day I check my own blood... Every trip, mix them up, I guess. Mistake. Sent mine, not his. Captain, I have one hunch left. What is this? Remember how lousy I began to feel when we were in comm screen the last time? And do you remember your theory about the Axionite probe? I think there was someone hiding in there when we went in. Couldn't be. Security had the place sealed up until we went in. Yeah, but maybe there's another way in. Ever think of that? What's your idea? Get hold of all the passengers and crew. Let it be known that control is alerted and it's only a matter of time, half an hour maybe, before we know the identity of a murderer on board. Tell them that the first officer is the only one permitted in the comm screen center and... He will bring you the message directly. <laughs> I think that'll smoke the killer out. Yes, we read you, Control. Thank you very much for the information. It clears up quite a mystery. <laughs> the past two weeks have been a long siege. I don't think we would have solved this without you. You can shut down the equipment. Do as I say. Good evening, Jennifer J-13. Oh, I'd appreciate it if you would point that probe in another direction. How did you get in here? Through the cable closet. It opens onto the deck. Oh, uh -huh. what do you want, another death on your hands? <laughs> that doesn't bother me. I haven't gone through all this for nothing. Through what? Why do you think I'm on this shuttle? I don't know. Are you running from something, Jennifer? Mm, not a bad guess. I'm going to take that probe away from you. You're not going to fire it. You're not... One more step and I... Oh! Don't! Oh, well, Captain, you really hit her. Huh. Where did you learn that? From another antique book. It's called a karate chop. Oh, well, we were both right. She's got a supply of those probes. She's quite a deadly woman. I commend you on faking that transmission. But now that we know, let's put in a real one. U.S. Space Shuttle, Robert Goddard. We're right here, Control. Your inquiry, Ray Jennifer J-13. This is a woman known as Maria J-13. She is wanted for the murder of her husband using a probe delivering an RM beam. Maria's husband was manufacturing these illegal probes, and his death may have been the result of a quarrel. Would you point the transmission lens head at the suspect? Certainly. How's that, Control? No question. Her features match very closely with photographs we have right here. Two weeks ago, all points broadcasts were being sent out for the apprehension of the suspect. Control, you'll be getting a full report soon. I hope I can deliver it in person. Over and out. Jennifer, are you Maria J-13? Yes, how did you get onto this shuttle? I disguised myself, and a friend bought me a ticket. So that you could escape. You didn't get very far. As far as I wanted to. Why do you talk nonsense? You're not stupid. No, I'm lucky. It was luck I was on deck, and I could hear that APB from Earth Control was asking people to be on the lookout for me. Graham, who received that warning, wasn't so lucky, was he? I knew I had to stop that communicator before he stopped me. I asked to be let in, to send a message, and they started repeating the APB. I could tell he was beginning to suspect it was me. When he had his back to me, I pointed my probe at him and ran out. 
I wasn't sure if he was dead. I walked around the deck and threw the spent probe away. You don't have to say any more, Jennifer. The law protects you. When I left the deck and went back inside, I stood in a corner of the hall. Someone came along and went inside the communication center. Yeah, you saw me going inside. But nothing happened. No alarm, nothing. Nobody calling out help or murder. I had to know if he was dead. If he wasn't, they'd be after me. You came to the door and said you wanted to send a message. I told you to go away. I didn't know, but that I'd have to kill him again. And if they repeated that APB, I'd have had to kill you. I think you've forgotten, young lady. Our universe is kept healthy by the law of enforce and terminate. The ENTs investigate, decide, and condemn. Enforce and terminate doesn't frighten me. Maria, I have never met a person like you. So cold-blooded. You certainly fooled me. You wanted to believe my lie. You wanted to believe I really did love Graham G7. And that we were going to be married. I'm afraid I did. I never met the man until I killed him. You confessed to a great deal. Have I? I've forgotten what I told you. Jennifer, Maria, whoever you are, we'll be meeting again at the Council of Enforce and Terminate. You don't belong in this century. If there were many people like you, we would have never reached the civilization we have in this year of 2675. You are a throwback, young lady. You are that one piece of sand that can ruin the delicate machinery of our progress. So don't fool yourself for one moment that I will rest until you have been terminated. That this is a story of crime in the high air is much the same as if it were a tale of death on the high seas. The sin of murder started with Cain, and who knows when it will end, if ever. However, in today's tale, we are treated to a new environment, an escape from the earth to a new world, man-made, in an age presumably better and more efficient than ours. It's something to be hoped for, if it ever happens. I shall be back shortly. of us who believe we are the first visionaries who see life in a limitless universe, hear this. For I dipped into the future, far as human eye could see, saw the vision of the world and all the wonders that would be, saw the heavens filled with commerce, argosies of magic sails, pilots of purple twilight dropping down with costly bales. Those are the words of a poet born almost 200 years ago. Alfred Lord Tennyson. It is he, not us, who had the vision. Our cast included Gordon Heath, Paul Hecht, Velika Gray, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.